sought medical attention in another county. Officers located a male with injuries consistent with a self-inflicted gunshot wound inside the building. Preliminary information gathered from the statements and evidence lead detectives to believe the male is the suspect in the shooting at this location. This individual has since been identified as 19-year-old Brandon Hole. FedEx officials have confirmed that Mr. Hole was a former employee at the facility and he was last employed in 2020. There were at least 100 people in the facility at the time of the incident. Uh, many were changing shifts and were on their dinner break. Detectives have served several search warrants at multiple locations and are continuing to gather evidence to determine the facts that led up to Thursday night's incident at the FedEx ground playing field operations. Uh, anyone with information on this incident is asked to call Crime Stoppers anonymously at 317-262-TIPS or the INPD Homicide Office at 317-327-3475. Um, I'll now try to answer any questions that you guys have if I can. The weapon, uh, assault weapon, AR-15? Uh, it was a rifle. Specifically, uh, I don't know a, a make and model, but it was a rifle, yes. Do you know if he was fired? If he was fired? I don't have that information. I just know that he was, he was last employed in 2020. No, and that's, so we've, we've recently identified him. So now the work really begins trying to establish some of that and, think, and see if we can figure out some sort of motive in this, but we don't have that right now. How many can you tell us about whether or not he was on IMPD's or FBI's radar? Uh, the only thing that I can tell you is he was found in a, in a couple of police reports. Uh, that's all that we have. One of those is from last year and one was from, uh, I believe, 2013, possibly. Was one March 9, 2020? Was it guns in a residential facility on March 9, 2020? That's what was in the, the 2020 report, that's correct. Did his girlfriend work here? Uh, I have no information on that. Are you able to elaborate on the report? Excuse me? Are you able to elaborate on the report? Um, I honestly don't have a lot of information on that report. I know a gun was seized in the one from last year. Um, but that's all the information that I have on those. How many search warrants total are you uh, executing here? Um, I couldn't answer that. We have we have um, a couple locations. We have a vehicle. We certainly have. Um, we we may have um, electronic devices if we seize those that we will and seek and search and warrants and on. And in this prior, I can see that there is a there is a. Uh, indication that there was an investigation open early on, that a family member had contacted uh, police here and FBI, something that there was an investigation open and eventually closed, but that gun that you all seized, that was part of that investigation. You don't have any knowledge of that investigation? I don't have that information. Discussion yet. between your department and uh, FBI? Um, there will be discussion between us. Previously. But previously not that I'm, not that I'm aware of. If he was a former employee, what brought him back here last night specifically? I wish we could answer that. No so idea. nothing happened leading up to this last night? Not that we've learned at this point. That is, that's obviously, I mean, those are the questions that we work to answer right now that we don't have those answers. Have, have all, all of the victims, all the victims and been the... notified? No, we are still working on that. The coroner's office is, is working to make those notifications and that's still going on uh, as we speak. Have all of the victims and the suspects' bodies been removed from the scene? No, not at this time. Um, I, I don't yet. I don't believe that's the case, but I, I don't know that for sure. I don't believe that. That's and, correct. And not legally because he wasn't legally... I don't know. At this point, I don't know that it was illegally possessed. You don't know if it's illegally Correct. Possessed. To clarify, what did you see from the home? I'm not going to get that information. And with regard to the victim, was there any uh, uh, characteristics that tied them together, whether race, religion, anything else? Um, not a gender? Bit. Not at this time, and we're still, like I said, we're still identifying victims, so we still don't have all that information. Um, after everyone is identified, then we'll certainly start working to see um, if there is anything that ties them together, ties them to a suspect, anything like that. Okay, what, what kind of police background do you have? The report? Uh, the report that I'm, that I'm familiar with is from last year. I know it's done with the Do you know if the suspect had any relationship with anyone inside the FedEx facility, girlfriend, family member, anything? No, we don't have any information indicating that right now. No information as to why he was terminated? 
I don't know that he was terminated. Do you know when he last worked here in 2020? Do you have anything more specific? Uh, I don't have exactly when that is. I believe it was um, in the fall of 2020, but I don't know that for certain. Did any of your emergency dedicate you to said anything that you were doing about Not that I'm aware of, no. The gun that was seen in the March report, and was that returned to her? What was the status of that? Uh, we're still looking into that. And, and you're speaking to his family and his parents? Sure. Uh, Absolutely. And there's nothing you can share from that? No, we're not certainly not going to share our conversations with uh, with his family. I don't think that would be appropriate uh, on many levels, but no, we're not going to share that. Take One us more the question. investigation, if you can. What happens here now, sir? Well, it, the same thing that's, that's been happening uh, you know, since, since late last night, early this morning. So we continue. Uh, crime Lab is still here. They are finishing processing the scene. Uh, they're working closely with the coroner's office. Uh, we're to the point now where we're identifying victims. Uh, making notifications to the family, and then hopefully we will wrap up the process of this crime scene here uh, very shortly, and then at least with this person. Are all the victims' families been identified yet, or still is that still going on? That's still going on as we speak. And thank you. So the coroner's office is responsible for actually positively identifying uh, the victims, and there's a there's a very strict set of criteria um, that has to be met, and so those are either dental records, DNA, or uh, identification by family. So obviously, any ID that they might be wearing certainly helps us, sets us in the right direction, but we still have to go through the right steps with the coroner's office to make those. Are you able to identify inside the building where it happened? They said that there's some type of security employees have to go through before they can go into the facility. Does that happen in the breezeway right there, or are you um, you know, as I said before, there is some physical security inside that uh, inside that entryway, and I think it, it served its purpose and it did what it was supposed to do. Was the timeline just determined by the call for surveillance video as well? I think we never heard people bring it with their phones back.